Today, Voices from Oxford has the pleasure of talking to a young mathematician here in the university who has won a very major uh, international prize for a new discovery in mathematics, and his name is James Maynard. James Maynard graduated in Cambridge, then came here to Oxford to be uh, a doctoral student at Balliol College, and then won another major award which is to become uh, a fellow by examination at Morglan College, Oxford. What did you have to do in the examination to do that, <laughs> James? So it's a slightly strange title, but I yes. think it was just a fairly normal job interview, in fact. But it is actually a tradition of Magdalen College, isn't it, to yes. have this category of a fellow by examination? Um, yes. Yes, that's right. It's Magdalen College's traditional yes, name for right. their yes. junior research fellows. Yes. Anyway, it's their junior research yeah. fellow. Yes, that's right. Now, your area of mathematics is one which, in one sense, is very obvious to people because it's numbers, <laughs> right? Now, yep. um, I imagine that the majority of our listeners will have a very simple idea of numbers. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there are your numbers. Yep. And you can go on doing that up to 20 to 30 and, and up to infinity. Hmm. Right. Now, but numbers are not all the same, are they? Is that um, no, so I'm very much interested in these numbers, and particularly the whole numbers, as you said, yes. one, two, three, and so on. Um, and I'm interested in the structural properties of these from a mathematical viewpoint. Yes. And um, it turns out that if you think about multiplying numbers together, so very natural operations like this, then um, the key building blocks of numbers are so-called prime numbers. Right. Um, so these are numbers uh, which have no factors other than themselves and one. Yes, so, yes. for example, six is not a prime number no, it because it can three. be written as two times yes, three, yes. whereas five is a prime number yes. because the only way of writing it as one number times another number, when both numbers are whole numbers, right. is five times one or one yes. times five. Yes, um, right. So that automatically means that most primes, in fact, all but one must be odd numbers, mustn't they? Because two is obviously a prime, <laughs> four is not, six is not, and off to infinity then, <laughs> because they could always be divided by two, because that's the definition of an even number. Yep. Right? Exactly. Got that? Exactly right. Okay. Now, what you've done, therefore, is to explore the primes as they get very, very big. Um, and is that correct? Yeah, so I'm very much interested in prime numbers and how many prime numbers there are. And although um, on a small scale the prime numbers seem to occur slightly randomly, if you take a very fuzzy stand back viewpoint of the right. prime numbers. So you investigate very large numbers of them. Very large numbers, then you can say some things about the prime numbers on average where they have. Um, fairly nice statistical properties, which yes. we can then hope to specifically right. understand. Right. Now, I want to come in now to what you have just done to get this major prize, because as I understand it, initially the primes are all stacked together, aren't they? You go three, five, seven, and then you get to nine, which clearly is not because it's yeah. three times three, and then you go on and so on. And your, the, the ones that are stacked together with just one even between them, they're twin primes, correct? Yeah. So that's the name we use for two that are stacked close together with only an even one between. Now you've proved a theorem about how big the gaps can be between uh, twin primes. And if I've understood it correctly, instead of that growing indefinitely and they're coming a point at which you can say that there will never be a prime gap um, smaller than a particular number, you've proven that that is wrong. Is that um, roughly right? Yes, that's right. Yes. So we know that typically the primes become more and more spread out as Yes, the numbers get, right. bigger get bigger and bigger. bigger, and bigger. Um, yes. So we know that if you look at big enough prime numbers, most of the gaps are going to be bigger than a million or a yes, billion, indeed. provided you're yes. looking at big enough numbers. Yes. Right. Um, but, and it's a very famous conjecture, a very old problem in mathematics, to show yes. that even though we expect most prime gaps to be very, very large, in fact, 
contrary to this, there are infinitely many gaps which are yes. really surprisingly small, right. and the twin prime conjecture is the f statement that there's infinitely many right. pairs of primes that differ by at most two. Ah, right, um, okay, yes. And so this is a very old, famous yes. problem in mathematics, um, and one that we really didn't, couldn't say that much about until right. just a couple of years ago, when there was a breakthrough of someone called Yutang Zhang in the University of New Hampshire, and I did some closely related work right. to this to show that, in fact, there are infinitely many pairs of primes that differ by, at most, in, my, in the case of my work, yes. 600. 600, yes. Um, right. So yeah. we believe it to be the case that yes. there's infinitely many pairs of primes that differ by, at most, yes. two. Yes. We can't quite prove this, unfortunately, yeah. right. but as a first step towards trying to prove this, we yes. can now say that there's infinitely many pairs of primes that differ by at most 600. Yes, right. Now, most, actually, when I next get off an underground station and somebody on that loudspeaker says, mind the gaps, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will think about our conversation. But now I want to relate it to the general interest of our audience because some will be scratching their heads and say, what on earth is the use of all yeah. that? Now, my understanding is that actually everybody using the internet and the computers has reason to be grateful to the theory of numbers. Is that roughly correct? Um, yes, so um, number theory sounds very much like abstract mathematics and um, quite often mathematicians are interested in it just because it's such a beautiful yes. mathematical side of things. But it turns out that prime numbers in particular have found lots of applications in computer science and particularly in cryptography. Right. So whenever you... Hiding things. Yeah. Yes. So whenever you um, make a purchase on Amazon, say with a credit card or some internet purchase, to keep your credit card details secure so a hacker can, yes. um, uh, can steal the details from you, um, the computers use various complex algorithms to scramble the numbers. Right. And the way they scramble the numbers um, is based on the properties of prime numbers. Right. And it's because certain operations to do with prime numbers, such as splitting a number up into its prime factorization, appear to be very difficult when you're yes. dealing with very large numbers. Right. Um, this is the key reason why um, when you make a purchase online, your credit card details can remain secure. And so anyone who's involved in cryptography and making internet purchases secure um, right. relies on our understanding or lack of understanding of prime numbers yes. um, in order to make all these algorithms that underpin our everyday lives okay. totally secure. So you go presumably then to very, very long numbers indeed, but you can, can't you? Because I think the largest prime discovered is over 16 million digits long. Um, but that, that would take ages to compute yeah. those kinds of numbers, wouldn't it? So you, you wouldn't use something as long as that, but you can use very long sequences, can't you? Um, and therefore get a very low probability that anybody could guess the answer. If a criminal was trying to take your credit card details using yes. the best ways that we know, it would take them hundreds of thousands of years yes. um, using even the fastest it. possible <laughs> computers yes. to break it. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's, but if we somehow knew much more about prime numbers, it might turn out that there's a much quicker way of breaking it. Right. And so this is why anyone who's involved in internet cr cryptography is very interested about yes. um, our knowledge about the distribution of prime numbers, because yes, this indeed, is really yes. important for making sure that internet transactions are, yeah. remain secure. And remain secure. Well, that's very reassuring. Uh, so. Once again, because actually it is, and I want to end the interview on this point, it is an interesting aspect, isn't it, of pure mathematics, Math means mathematics that most people would think was very abstruse, that actually time and again it's turned out to have great practical implications. After all, a very strange geometry, Riemannian geometry, turned out to be absolutely fundamental to the concepts of space-time in gravity and in relativity theory. And so you go through mathematics time and time again, discovering that uh, new mathematics, what seems to be obscure, actually turns out to have some very important uses. So we've got to be very grateful <laughs> to you and many congratulations on winning the Ramanujan Prize. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for talking yeah. for Voices from Oxford. Uh, it's been a pleasure.